What's up guys, it's Yvonne. In this video, I want to finally go over animations and show you how to set them up um, and just basically how to play around with it so that you can make your own animations, your own changes, all right, uh, to your ClickFunnels. So let me show you some basic small animations that you can use, which are very simple to do. So as you can see, these guys here, I have a timer that's just changing color. Uh, it's going from one color to another to another to another. So that's the difference between animations and the transitions that we've done in the past. Transitions go from one state to another. Normally when we hover over them, for instance, right, uh, we need something to trigger that transition. Animations can go on without a trigger and they just go on repeatedly if we want them to, right? But they have that option to do so. Um, so there's that color changing. There's this one, which uh, kind of, you know, if you wanted to make it like every 10 seconds, you want the clock to pop out. Or if uh, a person's been on the page for 20 seconds and you want the timer to pop out and say, hey, check your timer, your offer is about to expire. You can do that with animations as well. Uh, then I have these little things. So as you can see, the button, you know, shuffles a little bit and jumps up a little bit. Uh, you can add this to your buttons for navigation bar. So if you've seen the videos where we've added navigation bars, you can do that as well, uh, including the navigation bar that uh, I have given you the code for. You can use it there as well. So let me show you and let me explain to you how you can do that. I'm going to go into edit page. Uh, so there's a few things I'm going to go over. Uh, I even wrote them down. Uh, so one is I'm going to go over the basic animation declarations, what they are, what they mean, uh, and basically what the shorthand is. I'm going to go over the keyframes overview with you and how to play around with that. Um, and then how to set up hovering effects and how to be able to pause and have the little variations there, okay? So, um, let me see, let me start, uh, let me open another element then. Let me select another four column. And I am just going to move this up here. Now let me play around with this image here, okay? And because I know my head gets in the way sometimes, I'll put it here. Every single time I forget. I, 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 I keep telling myself that, you know, next time it's going to be somewhere else. But no matter where my head is, somewhere it gets in the way. Whether it's on the top right, top left, wherever, uh, it gets in the way one way or another, all right? So I'm sorry about that. Uh, okay, so we have that. So let me play around with this element with you guys. And let me let me let me pause that. So let's go over some of the animation uh, properties that we have. So the first one is animation name. We have to define our animation so that when we go into keyframes, we can specify what element we want to set the keyframes on. So what I'm going to do is I will say animation name. Name it whatever you want. Ideally, you want to make it something that's close to whatever it is you're doing, because when you have a lot of CSS code, you, you want to be able to reference quickly, right? So let's say animation, you know, because we only have one picture, I'll say picture. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is animation duration. I am doing these in order for a particular reason. I'll tell you why later. So that's why I, do, I, I may need to reference to that. Uh, so animation duration is the duration of your entire animation. How long is it going to last? Let's say three seconds. We're just going to say 3S. The next thing is, I believe, animation timing function. So animation timing function is um, how, how you want the animation to be spread out over your duration. So do you want the three seconds to be spread out evenly, or do you want it to start slow and fast, start fast and slow, whatever it is, right? We did the same thing in uh, transitions. So I'm just going to say linear. So I'm going to spread it all out evenly. Next thing I'm going to say is animation delay. And this is the delay before your animation starts. So if you first log on to the page, uh, how long do you want to wait before the animation takes off? All right, so let's let's leave it at zero for now so that I can show you guys things faster. We don't have to wait and uh, keep the video moving. Uh, next thing is iteration count. All right, iteration count is how many times do you want the animation to go through? So for example, when I hovered over my buttons, as you saw there, it shuffled a little bit and it stopped, right? So that's because I put a number there. If I would have said infinite, then it would have been doing that forever. So let's just say infinite again, just so I can show you guys for illustrative purposes, right? Any changes we make, you can see. 
the next thing is, okay, so these are really the main ones. Um, these are really the main ones. Uh, check down in the description down below if you want to skip these next three I'll be talking about. They're not as important, uh, but otherwise I will, I will go over them anyway. So the next one we're going to say is animation direction. That one is pretty straightforward. If I say normal, for example, it's going to go from whatever it is to this animation. The other option is reverse, for example, where it's going to go from my destination animation back to whatever the original picture should be. Uh, the other option is uh, alternate. So that's going to go from this to this, and then it's going to go from this to this. So it's not going to go back to the original position after it ends. It's going to stay there and it's going to go back, right? Back and forth, back and forth. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to leave it at normal for now. The next thing we have is animation fill mode. Okay, so the fill mode is when the animation ends, um, what state do you want it to be in? So when the animation ends, do you want it to be in a state um, of that frame that it was at the end of when it finished the animation? Or do you want it to be at the same frame when it finishes as it was at the beginning? So for example, if I say forward, forwards, then when the animation ends, it's, it, it's, it's going to stay there. If I were to say backwards, when the animation ends, it's going to go back and appear exactly the same as it was, okay? So don't worry about these, like I said, too much, and I will demonstrate what they are, but I do want to go kind of in a top-down order, so I think discussing this is crucial first, right? Uh, next, we're going to do animation. It's going to be play state. Uh, and this is literally what it is. Do you want your animation to be paused or going, okay? So the thing with this, you may be asking, why bother putting this in? Just delete the animation if you don't want it. Yes, um, you can, but first of all, if you delete it, you may not be able to paste it again, right? We don't know where it's going to end up. Second of all, if you have this option on paused, then as your animation is moving, if you click paused at that time, it's going to pause at that specific time. So paused does not mean animation is not moving. Paused means you're stopping the animation at a particular time point, which is why you may want to have this feature available. All right. So that's basically animations. Why did I put them in order? Well, I put them in order because instead of typing all those out, you can actually just say animation and you can indicate all these together all at once. So for example, I could say picture 3s linear 0s infinite normal forwards normal. And as you will see, when I demonstrate, that will be the exact same equivalent of everything that we've just written down, okay? So um, now let's get to the actual keyframe. So we are working with this picture here, right? And the reason why it's moving, by the way, is probably because I named it the exact same as one of my other ones. Yeah, so here I'll, I already have it named. So let's name it, let's name it picture five. Okay, now it shouldn't move. All right, let me save it. Um, so now here's where we actually make the animation. So I'm going to say at keyframes, and now we need to say the name. So the name is, oops, picture five. Um, and let's do the simplest one. Let's do the simplest animation. Uh, let's say going from its current state. So we're going to leave that blank. We're going to say two. And now we need to put these braces again. And let's say what we want the ending state to be. So let's say we want our picture to scale, right? As you saw in our video on 2D, uh, 2D rotations or 2D uh, transformations, right? So we're going to say transform scale, let's say 1.5. Now, make sure you have all these, uh, you know, brackets and uh, semicolons put in properly because this may mess you up and you may get confused and saying, hey, what's wrong? Um, because there's a lot of places where you can mess up with this in the keyframes. I've, I've been there, so I'm telling you from experience. Uh, so after we put the semicolon, we need to put that, uh, we need to close the brace, and then we need to close the brace at the end as well. So now our picture, that picture should go from nothing, right? 
to 1.5 times bigger over three seconds spread out evenly and it should end when it ends it should end at that final state so let's see there you go that's what it's doing so when it ends it, it stays there you can't see because it repeats but for example if i were to put uh iteration count one as you can see it ends at this right now the alternative is backwards and it's 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 gonna stay at whatever it was at the beginning so that's the idea for key frames um did i say keywords before key frames not 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 keywords Anyway, so we have that. Now, suppose you want several animations to take place. You don't want it to just go from one to another. Um, in that case, we would need to add percentages. So just like in our video on gradients, where we added percentages along the line, along the gradient line, we need to do the exact same thing here. So let's say if I change this to 100%, it's going to do the same, the, the same thing. Let me make that infinite doesn't matter so what this is saying is that uh, at 100 at the end of it here's what i want my picture to look like so at the end your picture will look like this okay uh, and before that it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna slowly grow so if you want something in between all you do is you add percentages where along this growth do you want your change to take place so let's say at 50 percent we want i don't know Transform, let's do something else. Let's do rotate. Uh, let's do rotate 30 degrees. Again, don't forget the proper punctuation, okay? 100 uh -huh. So somewhere we already did not do proper punctuation. Let's see where this is. Transform, rotate 30 degrees. Oh, there you go. We forgot percentages, okay? So there you go. So now at 50%, it's going to rotate, uh, and then it's going to move at the end to our specified position, what we want it to look like. So, I mean, that's the gist of it, right? Uh, the way I, I, I made these guys move is I added um, translate, okay? So if we want to make this picture move, for example, what I can do is instead of rotate, I could say translate and remember uh, translate has two numbers right the first one is right to left the second numbers in pixel specifies top to bottom so um, if it's positive it actually means right bottom okay so remember that positive is right bottom so if I say five pixels five pixels that means five to the right five down so uh, if, if you want to make it shuffle uh, from side to side, we can make it, for example, side to side, we need to make it zero, right? Uh, for top to bottom. Sorry, no. Uh, left to right, we do need to make that five. We need to make this zero. So basically, just don't even write that in. So just delete that. So five pixels. Uh, don't forget that. And let's do, let's do this one something as well. Not five. It's going to be the same thing. Let's make it four. All right, and now basically, as you can see, it shuffles really slowly because our time is three seconds and it's at 50%. So, you, you know, let's make it, um, let's make it 25. Let's make it 50. I'm just going to copy that and paste it here. 75. Now, if you want the, the animation to be smooth, so, well, I'll just show you. I'll just show you what I mean by that. That will be better. I'll be that will be better by telling you what I mean by smooth. So five, and then let's make let's make our final destination. Um, let's make it translate zero. I don't know. Go back to the original. So as you can see here, as it it's not very smooth, right? So as you can see, it shifts evenly and then kind of stops and then it does it again and then it kind of stops and then it does it again so to to counter that what we should do is we should make the the hundred percent and the zero percent keyframes exactly the same so let's make this zero percent and that's now zero so now as you can see as it moves it does it pretty 
evenly, right? So, so it doesn't stop and then do it again. Um, let me see. Let me try to make it so you guys can see better. Yeah, so there it doesn't move as much, but it still moves, right? So that's because our our distance. So maybe let me make this ten, this ten, this. No, what? Let's make it negative ten. Go the other way. So as you can see there, it's pretty consistent, right? It doesn't really stop and then go. And that's because we made the 100% and the 0% the same, okay? So if you want to make it consistent, make sure to do that. Aside from that, just play around with it. I mean, I like I've done teaching you and showing you how to do it. From here on, you just play around and you see kind of, you meddle with it and you see what percentage you should put, what... Um, what different property you should put for declaration, stuff like that, right? Uh, so that's up to you. Now, if you want to add hovering effect, so there's two things we can do. So let me delete all of that. Let me make, let me make something easier to see. I'll make rotate because it's really easy to see. 50 degrees. And I'll make that our final destination. So it's going to rotate, that, right? 50 degrees rotation is the final destination. So suppose suppose two things okay suppose when i i wanted to rotate only when i hover over it so in that case what i can do is i will just say i will just make this over and now it will only work when i hover over it now the only thing is as you can see here when i let go it it goes back to its original position okay so like I said, if you want to make it hover, just put hover in front of it. But the problem is, if I let go, it goes back to its spot. What if I want to pause it? Okay. And in that case, what we'd have to do is we would actually have to, uh, let me just think about this real quick. We would have to delete that hover there. And we would have to make a separate one. So we'd have to say, and this is where this play state also comes into handy. So we're going to say, animation play state uh, so let me make it let's make it paused when it's normal right when it's not touched let's make it paused but when we hover over it we want to make it um active what was it normal we want to make it work right let's see uh yes because i didn't put hover okay Oops, okay, hold up. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so then we need to say not normal, we need to say running. Okay, and now when you click on it, when you hover over it, it's going to run, and then when you leave it, it's going to pause. Okay, so that's kind of the solution to that. So that's about it. I think I went over everything I wanted to. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below. Let me show you. So I wanted to, to demonstrate how this is the exact equivalent of that. Let me just do that real quick. So if I literally just delete all that and leave only that thing there. Let's see. We didn't have the last command, which was paused. Okay, we need that there. Oops. There you go. Okay. So it's going to work exactly the same as if you had all those um, declarations written out. For me personally, I would prefer to have all the declarations written out. So that's the animation name, the animation duration, delay, iteration count. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, direction, fill mode, play state. Like I said, you know, these guys don't worry too much about them. You probably won't use them much, but these five are really important. Uh, for your animations so uh, but but if you want this shorthand you would use that so that's about it if you guys have questions comments concerns please leave them down below uh, please subscribe if you have already subscribed thank you I do appreciate it and I will see you guys in the next video